we've been looking at uh, the study of the church, uh, ecclesiology, and we, we are nearing the end. Uh, I expect maybe uh, another lesson or two, uh, perhaps maybe three, but we'll be finishing up soon. Um, as we do, we've been taking a look at uh, various major doctrines and themes of the scriptures. And uh, last week we started on uh, baptism. And if you have your book, actually we were looking at ordinances of the church and baptism being one of them. So we want to uh, continue and uh, uh, finish up the portion on baptism. And then we're going to look at the second ordinance uh, as, uh, as we have opportunity. So I want to go back to, uh, if you have your book on page 214, uh, under number two, and I had it as number one, but it should be number two, uh, prerequisites of baptism. And we see some instructions. And where do we get our instruction on that we should um, baptize? Where do we get that? Where, why do we do it? What authority do we have for doing baptism? Thank you, Cliff. So it was a it was a direct order from our Lord. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And we see here uh, in our, on the screen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that's where we get the authority. That's where we uh, now there were. Um, we, we saw, as someone said, we saw John the Baptist. John the Baptist was baptizing, but he was baptizing. What was the difference between John's baptism and uh, what the Lord told us to do? Uh huh. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody agree with that? Okay. So there was a difference, and, and thank you. Uh, Deacon Brick House. Now, we want to take a look at what um, what the scriptures tell us, what the author pointed out here regarding Acts chapter 8, verse 35. If someone would share with us from um, Acts, uh, from, from the uh, portion that the author put there for us. Acts chapter 8, verse 35, 37. Amen. Amen. What a testimony. Right. And we see here. I don't know how he knew that he had to be baptized. Obviously, he had studied. Maybe he had heard it. But he knew that he needed that. One of the things that uh, one of the prerequisites was believing and being baptized. So we see that the author helps us out here. Uh, somebody read that last paragraph in our book. Matter of fact. Here it is here. Okay, so we see one of the prerequisites is that they must understand enough to be saved. Let's uh, let me give you say something here. Let's say we have a candidate who comes down. We take him back in the back. 
And he wants to he wants to be saved. He wants to know who Jesus is. Do we stay back there with him until he comes out? We don't let him come out until he knows who Jesus is. You understand what I'm saying? You're, you're looking at me with a face. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, right? OK. Well, do we? You understand? We take him back there and the person wants to be saved. Well, we can't. We don't. Well, we used to bring him out back out. But we're saying that. Um, until you know what salvation is. We're going we're gonna to stay back here. We're going to work on it. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And, and my point is, being a bit facetious, um, a lot facetious, because, you know, that's what I used to hear. People, you know, we go back in the back and, uh, well, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to go through every word to get understanding. That's not what it's about. Matter of fact, if you notice what the uh, author wrote here, he said, missionaries have reported that in some cultures, the instruction of a national may take years before he is ready to become a Christian. Okay, so it is a process. It takes time. Everybody doesn't get it right away. Okay, yes, Mike. Yeah, I was reading, and I don't remember what I was reading, a book of Jesus, uh, Jesus, 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 story of the salvation. He related that he was in this church, the holiness church, and he sensed that, you know, they were hitting him in the head, and, you know, just all this stuff, you know, for him to confess Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 But, you know, that's, that's not our role. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, who gives him enlightenment? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has to illuminate and uh, help one comes to Christ. So, so uh, the, the author points out again, before a person can be baptized, he must understand enough to be saved. Doesn't mean he knows everything. We didn't know everything. I didn't know. I know about you, but I didn't know everything. Okay. I knew enough to be saved. Uh, I knew that Jesus was my savior. I was a sinner. I needed Christ. And ever since then, I've been trying to, to know him more and more. Okay. So it's a lifetime process. Uh, let's um, look at the next part. We're on B under faith. And would somebody read that portion for us, please? Once a person has been instructed in the way of salvation and has accepted Christ as his Savior, he is ready to follow the Lord in believers' baptism. The Bible Lord is always salvation first, then baptism. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, what about um, there's some churches believe that when they have a child uh, they want to bring him to church and he has to be baptized Um, is that is that biblical? Is that what we do? Some churches do. Yes, girl. Mm-hmm. But I didn't understand, you know, I had a child, and seeing babies, babies are done, and, you know, water pulled off, and 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can remember ever really being taught the significance even of that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right, right. Yes, Sheila. I went to an Episcopal church also. Can you hear? I went mm-hmm. to an Episcopal church. I was raised in an Episcopal church. And um, nothing about receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We did have this book called the Book of Common Prayer. Mm-hmm. And now that I think back, there were scriptures about salvation, but no one ever confronted you to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Mm-hmm. Never had that, but I knew the scriptures. And then after we did whatever we, oh, we I think the two sacraments was Holy Communion and Baptism. And I, I remember before um, being able to take Holy Communion. We had to go to confirmation class. Mm-hmm. Confirmation class. And there the priest gave us information. But again, as a child, I really don't remember everything. All we knew was he told us he couldn't guarantee us that we were going to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. did say, Jesus told the thief, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's all they could do. They couldn't go any further than that. We know that when we die, we will go to paradise. Mm-hmm. And we took Holy Communion, which was real wine. And the bishop came in after you got baptized. And the bishop put his hands on your head. And I think he said something like, remember, old man, from dust thou art to dust thou shalt return. He put his hands on you and he went to each one. Bishop Dahl confirmed me. I don't know if you remember him or not. Bishop Dahl. Mm-hmm. But that's all I, I mean, no true coming to, you know, looking at, recognizing your importance, none mm-hmm. of that, mm-hmm. none of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and we thought we were all right. Sure. And we were in there dancing and carrying <laughs> on in the church, and holding those people used to pass by, and say, those people in that church going to hell. <laughs> and our pastor, every time somebody had a family member who was saved, and they witnessed to that person, I remember this, mm-hmm. we would be like in Sunday school, and they would say, Verses and so and so, and every time we would bring that back, the teacher or the pastor just wiped it out. They just wiped it out. That's not true. That's not mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my pastor didn't even believe in a literal Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. He just believed mm-hmm. that people God created men and women. And sad to say, um, he uh, he took his life. Mm-hmm. And he took his life. They understand that. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of mess in that church. Just all kinds of stuff. I don't know about the church. All, the pastor was accused of all kinds mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. But we, we stayed there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary first. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did in the Catholic Church. We went to a class for instruction before we even did any communion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we were taught to go into a box behind a curtain. We did. I did not see you behind the curtain and pray to just say your sins. You know what you did. Confession. Mm-hmm. I got saved in the light of it all. Mm-hmm. They, came. Mm-hmm. they came to my house, I guess, giving out festival time, giving out things. And my children were scared now. They were scared now. Mm-hmm. Service that my mom just had a women's day service. And I did accept Christ then and said, Well, I need to be. Mm-hmm. I just take my children back there because they sprinkle on whatever they're baking. 
Right. 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 Amen. Carolyn, did you have a comment? Exactly. <clears throat> that's that's one. Of, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good question. Excellent. Let's go back to. Um, let's take a look at Romans, chapter ten. Yes. He wanted to know. Well, I'm going to let him repeat it. Sir, what's your name? Lamar. 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 Uh, Lamont or Lamar? Lamar. Oh, Lamont. OK, thank you. Would you repeat your question so they. Okay, so you hear his question? Yeah. What should you know to be saved? Okay, Cliff? Yeah, if you look over on page 215, you look at there, 
Okay, it, that's true. Now, I want to give him a biblical scripture that he can go by. Okay? Um, <clears throat> because we believe in the word of God. Okay? Uh, not what man wrote, not what I say, not what you believe. Okay? What does the word say? Okay? So, take a look at Romans chapter 10. Matter of fact, there's there's many scriptures I'm starting to flood in my mind. If you have another one, you you think of it. But we want to share uh, with Lamont uh, Romans chapter 10. And I want you to turn to. Um, let's let's take a look. At, let's begin at verse uh, eight. It says Romans chapter 10, verse eight. But what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, what does it say? Thou shalt be saved. Now, let's go back and look at that. Let's take a look at that and see what it's what what it's saying. Um, let's see, verse seven. Wait a minute. It says um, in verse nine, if you will confess with your mouth, what does that mean? What does it mean to confess with your mouth? Bear witness. Okay. What else? To agree. Okay. To agree. But what are you doing? You're proclaiming. You're proclaiming. You're letting it be known that this is what you believe. Not and, and you're, you're doing it outwardly. Okay. You're professing or confessing. Uh, and what are you confessing? Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? That's all right. You... Okay. OK, OK, that Jesus is Lord, that he came. Uh, I think I understand what you're saying, and we're going to get there in a moment. Anybody else want to help him out? Exactly. Now, now, see what we look at, look at here. This is the this is the Greek. OK. Um, and in the in the old. Um, Hebrew scriptures, it was a capital L-O-R-D, all caps, Jehovah. OK, but when it was translated to Greek in the Septuagint, they, they use capital L-O-R-D, meaning same word, God. G, it means God. That's that's how they proclaim God. And so our masters, you say. Uh, he, he, he's Lord. He, he's the owner. He's the maker. He's the creator. So what he's saying here, you're proclaiming that Jesus is God is really what you're saying. That Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. And that's what you're proclaiming. Uh, Jesus is Lord. And he says, so if you confess with your mouth. That Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. So going back to what you were, I believe what you were trying to say is that Jesus was God in the flesh. OK, he, 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 that's what you're confessing. 
that Jesus is God come in the flesh. He's Lord. Anybody? You got to look on your face. I'm just. OK. OK. Go ahead. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And I ask them for their testimony to make sure it lines up with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a biblical or biblically based testimony. Now, when a person claims they are saved, but they don't believe that Jesus <coughs> is God, tell them to go to Norbert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. They don't want to take um what's this right here? The um orientation class. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But yet they want to join this church. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a problem in this church right now with that particular situation. Don't believe Jesus Christ is God. Mm -hmm. But yet they think they're saved. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. I'm well, I, I I'm telling you what the word says. Look, what does the word say? Okay. So if they don't believe that. They're not not saved. So that's what the word says. Right. So. Uh, so that's what I would say. But as long as they want to continue to come. And we'll, serve. We, we would. Serving. Well. What do you mean serve? What do you No. No. Those are privileges for membership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are a thief. Mm -hmm. And a robber. And I'm mm -hmm. here to proclaim today that they and, and, and you know, a lot of times we think, I mean, we sit here, and this is the reason why I'm saying this. We sit here and we talk about these things, mm -hmm. and we don't even realize that they're going on in this very church. Mm -hmm. But nobody has allowed the person to serve. But I'm saying that there are people who believe they are saved and they do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. I'm okay. You that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, now haven't, they haven't gone through orientation, but I'm saying what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to say is they are so dogmatic about the fact that they don't have to believe that Jesus Christ is God. I'm telling you. Mm. They feel like they don't have to believe that. All they can they all they have to believe is they think they believe that Jesus died for their sins. But I think it's something that it's just like what Pastor is preaching on now, and and you I cannot you cannot believe how many people don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Come tomorrow, mm -hmm. sit in this this church and we have more people in it tomorrow morning than there is now, and that's the biggest fight I'm telling you mm -hmm. that goes on. Yeah, we hear okay. modalism. They profess in Christ. They don't believe Jesus is God. I'm telling you what goes on. Okay. And you just have to make sure that, and, and I know I'm adamant about this, but because I go back there so much and I hear so much and I see so much, if you don't get that, if they don't, if they can't get that thing straight, and you know they get upset, mm -hmm. they feel like I'm trying to tell, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to show them. Mm -hmm. This is what the word of God mm -hmm. is saying. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how many people get an attitude. I mean, upset when you tell them that they must believe mm -hmm. that Jesus is God. You take them to, I take them to John 8 24. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They can't understand that I am. Sure. Of, sure. Jesus told the Pharisees, if you don't believe that I am He, meaning God, mm -hmm. you shall die in, in your, your sins. sins. That's right. But that is the biggest problem. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll have to make. Uh, before I want to get Reese, go ahead, Reese. I, I want to say this: that, that we don't have a problem. It would be a problem if she didn't keep Christ in court. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. You understand? But mm -hmm. God said, if God planted the seed, I 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's clear in the book of John, in the book of John, John. which is the book of Daniel, that it demonstrates clearly that Jesus is God. Right. There's no question about that. But, but, but you know, that, that there is a, a spirit of disbelief. We understand in this world. We understand that. Mm-hmm. See, but Bill having that spirit, because I, I, I'll be honest with you, at one time, such as where I met, you understand? Mm-hmm. But somebody, Jesus loved me enough to die on the cross, somebody, and he used somebody to love me enough to keep telling me that Jesus is God. Right. And I need So the problem is not, the problem is not their disbelief. Well, that's true. The Holy Spirit has to open a heart. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. You can't force them. I don't no. care how much you keep Christ. You can you can make it clear through the Word of God, but it's the Spirit of God. That's right. That opens the it, heart. it is the Spirit. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Francis. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think for one, you need uh, need to have a. It, it goes back to what Sheila said. The Holy Spirit has to open your heart. Um, you exactly, and as long as you don't harden your heart, you can learn. You will find him. Particularly if you seek him with all your heart, you seek him diligently, you will find him. Uh, He will open up to you. Um, But if you start hardening your heart, then it's not the word's not going to penetrate. It's not going to be able to get through. Uh, So, yes. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, 
It is a gift. It's a gift. I can remember um, going to a church, been attending church all my life. Well, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> but when I was young, I received the Lord because I knew that I was a sinner. I knew I needed a savior. But I didn't know who Jesus really was. And it wasn't until years later that became the pursuit of my life to find out who Jesus was. Um, I don't know, must have been around 24, I guess. And, and went to a church. No, and these people came through the neighborhood uh, and they start preaching on the corner. Uh, maybe that's why I have such a passion for going out on the street. But they, they were preaching. And I eventually I went to not their church, but another church and sat in on the Sunday school classes. That's all I did. Didn't go for service, just sat in on the Sunday school because I knew there I would find truth. At least I always felt that I could. And we were studying a lesson one day and somebody said something about God. And they mentioned Jesus in the same breath. And, I, and, I, and so when it was over, I asked them, you know, who is this Jesus? What are you talking about? And when they told me that Jesus was God, it blew my mind because everything came together. Everything came together. And, you know, that's the one big thing that, it, that is so hard for people to get through on. The Holy Spirit has to show you that. And I can remember, you know, with Jews, I, 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 I just love some stuff with a young Jewish lady just, just this week. Um, talking about how would she recognize the Messiah? OK, it's way back in the Old Testament. And if you follow through, it's way is so much in the New Testament. Um, so, Lamont, there's so much in the word. You just have to take the time to look for it. And it's just like what Pastor said last week. We, or maybe it was two weeks ago, digging to find out who God is. It'll tear you, it will, you know, absolutely. It's a labor of love, but it's so rewarding. And so you have to really dig. It's like digging for gold, but it's precious when you find it, at least. There's um, there we just um, we just we just went through the Christmas celebration, Lamont. We just went through the Christmas celebration, right? And there was so much even in the in the scriptures that we studied, even in the songs that we sang that talked about who Jesus was. And I, I it comes to mind uh, Luke chapter two, verse. 11. And uh, I'm reading the, uh, this is the Holman Christian Standard Bible, but it's in your book a different way. 
It says, today a Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you in the city of David. And it goes on to tell, and there's so many things like that throughout the scriptures that if you read them, that you would understand who Jesus is. So is, is and, and I understand that, uh, it, it, you know, they, uh, the Jews get caught up in where you're talking about one God or three gods. But even in the Old Testament, even in Elohim, uh, the word is a plural noun. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's just throughout the whole scriptures. So to answer your question, that's what it's saying. That's that's what the scripture said, that you would know if you're saved or not. That if you um, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead. What to happen? Thou shall be saved. OK, that's the word. OK, thank you so much for your time. We're going to. That's right. If you save, you want to serve. We, we're going to we, we'll pick up there next week. Thank you so much uh, for y- your participation. And Father, again, we are so grateful that you have opened up your word to us uh, by your spirit to know that Jesus is Lord. There is no other. Thank you for sending him. Thank you for dying in our place. Thank you for the hope that we have uh, but that you have given to us uh, through your son. And we pray that you will continue to bless our worship, bless our service, um, that you would get glory this day. We ask it all in Christ's name with thanksgiving. Amen.